right, in this video, we're going to be looking at what's called the multiplicity of a zero uh, polynomial function. Now, in this first box, it's way more complicated than, than what it needs to be. So I'm just going to summarize what's in the box, but it's much easier uh, to understand when we look at an actual example. So don't panic yet. Uh, let's look at what this box says, though, first. So it says if f is a polynomial function, okay, so we're dealing with a function, and x minus c to some exponent m is a factor, but f to, or but um, x minus c to m minus one power is not. Don't worry about that. To be honest, that's just like an exception to the rule that we'll never see. So in other words, if we see that we have x minus c to some exponent, then c is a zero. We talked about that yesterday. But then with this is new with the multiplicity m of the function. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at this example to make more sense. So this first example, we have x minus um, 1 being squared. So think about what it means to square something. What it means to square something is we would multiply it times itself that many times. So this is the same as x minus 1 times x minus 1. Well, that means that we would have two zeros of the same thing. Okay, if we set each of those factors equal to 0, we would get a 0 of 1 we'd have two of them. So we would say that we have a multiplicity of two. So in other words, we don't always need to write that out. Instead, the factor, if it has an exponent, that exponent tells you what the multiplicity is. It tells you how many of the same zero we would have. Now the key here, though, is we're looking at even multiplicities. Anytime we have an even multiplicity, so this would have an x-intercept of one, that means we would have a situation where it's going to bounce so it's going to bounce off that x-intercept so that happens anytime there's an even multiplicity that means that it's the graph is going to bounce off of that x-intercept so we have two situations the line could either bounce off the x-intercept or it could pass through the x-intercept let's look at the next one so the next one again we would have whoops x plus 4 cubed means that we would have x plus 4 times x plus 4 times x plus 4. But I don't always want to write those out multiple times. So the idea here is I could set that factor, x plus 4, equal to 0. I would get negative 4 as my answer. So my x-intercept would be at negative 4. But the fact that I have an exponent of 3 means that we would have a multiplicity of 3, as illustrated by the fact that we would have x plus 4 times x plus 4 times x plus 4. But again, you will not be doing that. You'll just be looking at that and say, okay, the 0 is negative 4. The exponent there is 3, so that means there's 3 of them, is all that means. So how does that look when we go to graph it? Well, again, it's an odd multiplicity. So when we go to graph this one, that just means that the graph would pass through that point. And it's only going to have one spot where it hits the x-axis. And so it might be doing some weird things above or below the x-axis, but it's only going to have one x-intercept and it's going to pass through it. So if there's an odd multiplicity, so if the exponent is just 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, or so on, that means that the line, the graph, would pass through that x-intercept. If it's an even multiplicity, that means it would bounce off that x-intercept. We'll just add that here, that this would be pass through. All right, so let's look at some other examples where we might have more than one thing going on with the with the graph. So we're going to graph this polynomial. Move my screen up here so you can see this. Uh, so it says we're going to sketch the graph of the factored polynomial. All right, so we're going to first find the y-intercept. Now, when we had something in standard form, remember it was really easy to find the x-intercept in standard form. It was whatever our constant was. This is not in standard form. This is in factored form. So in order to be able to find the um, whoops, in order to be able to find the x or the y intercept, we're going to use, we're going to put 0 in for x. If we do that, we would get 0 plus 2 quantity cubed, don't forget the exponents, times 0 minus 1 squared. So 0 plus 2, when you add those together, obviously that would just be 2 cubed, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1 squared, well, 2 cubed is 8, and negative 1 squared would be a positive 1. 
So that means that our y-intercept for this one is going to be at uh, positive 8. Then to find the x-intercepts, remember that's where we're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Whoa. There we go. So if I set x plus 2 equal to 0 and x minus 1 equal to 0, we would get the x-intercepts of negative 2 and positive 1. All right, so we know the x-intercepts are at negative 2, positive 1, and we know the y-intercept is at 0. So let's plot those points. And the y-intercept is at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so we plot the point where we'd have an x, I'm sorry, y-intercept of 8, x-intercept of negative 2, y-intercept at 1. Now before we, and then the end behavior, so we're going to graph it with uh, the appropriate end behavior. Now, for the end behavior, this is where it gets a little bit weird. We're not, we don't have to go through and expand all this out. But remember, we would end up taking x times, or x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. And in that situation, we're going to end up with an x cubed term. Okay, if we were to multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2, the largest term would end up being x cubed. If we were to take x minus 1 times x minus 1 times, or I guess it would just be x minus 1 times x minus 1, the largest term there would end up being x squared. Okay, so what we're going to do to figure out what the end behavior would be, basically take and look at what the largest term would be in each of those factors. So x being cubed would be x cubed, x being squared would be x squared, and now I multiply those together and that would give us x to the fifth. So if we were to multiply that whole mess together, our first term would simply be x to the fifth. So what does that mean for end behavior? So if you didn't watch the previous video, I want to make sure you do that. But we would have the right and left side of our graph. So the fact that that would be a positive leading term means the right side of that graph would go up. The fact that it's an odd exponent means the left side would go in the opposite direction. So I know that the left side of the graph would go down, the right side of the graph would go up. Now what's happening in between there? So for that, let's look at what's happening with each of those x-intercepts. So remember the degree here at the for the x, so for this one here, for the x plus 2 when I set that equal to 0, that's going to pass through. that x-intercept because, again, the degree is 3. It's an odd exponent. It's going to pass through that one. For this one, at x, when we set that one equal to 0, that one's going to bounce off that x-intercept. So how is that going to look? Well, our graph is going to come up and pass through. Where's my... Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's going to pass through negative 2. So then it's got to hit this y-intercept. And then it's going to come down, and it's going to bounce off at positive 1. So it's important to remember that it's not just going to pass through all those points. Some of them it might bounce off. And that's really important to recognize. Again, we get that because we're x minus 1. That had an even degree and an even exponent there. So it's going to bounce off that 0. All right, let's try uh, doing this one together. And then I'll give you one more to do on your own. So here we have the quantity, or 2 times the quantity, x minus 2 cubed, times x plus 3 squared. Let's start by finding the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, we're going to replace x with 0. And so I'm just going to simplify these. 0 minus 2 would be negative 2, and negative 2 cubed would be negative 8. And 0 plus 3 would be 3, and 3 squared would be 9. If you multiply these together, you can use a calculator, but when you multiply those, multiply those together, we're going to get a y-intercept of negative 144. Okay, let's find the x-intercepts. Now, when we find the x-intercept, 2 is not a factor. There's no x with 2, so we're not going to set 2 equal to 0. I mean, you could, but then you're going to get the statement 2 equal to 0, which is a false statement. Then you freak out and wonder, what the heck does that mean? So the only things that we set equal to 0 are any factors that have an x. So x minus 2, set that equal to 0. x plus 3, set that equal to 0. 
So we would get 2 and negative 3. Now sometimes it's helpful to separate them out like this because then we can write a note to ourselves. So where x equals 2, it's going to pass through. Because again, the exponent there is odd. For x equals negative 3, the exponent is even, so it's going to bounce off that one. Okay, so we want to make sure we make a note to ourselves somewhere, so then that way we know what's going on in those two ends. Okay, now let's figure out our end behavior. So remember for that, we would look at the x. When we cube that, when we take x minus 2 cubed, we'd end up with an x cubed term there. And we would have a 2 out in front. Um, and then we would take the x. When we take x plus 3 times x plus 3, we're going to end up with an x squared. So if we were to multiply those together, we would end up with a 2x. So you add the exponents, we get 2x to the fifth. My leading term, I don't care about anything else, my leading term would be 2x to the fifth, meaning that it's positive, so the right side is going to go up. It's an odd exponent, so the left side is going to go in the opposite direction. So now we have everything that we need. We have the end behavior. Um, we know that the y-intercepts can be at negative 4. We know where the x-intercepts are going to be. So the x-intercepts are going to be at negative 3, positive 2. We know we're going to have a y-intercept way down here at negative 144. Okay, and then we know the end behavior. The left side is going to go down and to the right. The left side is going to go up, comes down to the left. The right side is going to go up and to the right. And so what's going to happen in between there? At negative 3, it's going to bounce off. So that way it can come down and hit the y-intercept. And then it's going to come up. And it's going to pass through positive 2. So that's how we'd get our graph. All right, I want you guys to try one completely on your own. So go ahead and try this one on your own. And so go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've done it correctly. All right, let's see how you did here. So first says find the x-intercepts and state their multiplicities. So the x-intercepts would be x equals 1, and then we would just say it's, that is a multiplicity of 4. So here we would have the other one would be x equals negative 3 with a multiplicity of 3. So it just tells you how many we have. This means that it's going to bounce. And this means the multiplicity of 3 means it's going to pass through. The y-intercept, to find that, we're going to replace x with 0. So negative 1 to the 4th power would just be a positive 1. 3 cubed would be a positive 27. If you multiply those together, we get a y-intercept of negative 54. We have an x-intercept at 1 and negative 3. We have a y-intercept at negative 4. To find the end behavior, we would have an x to the 4th power times x cubed. If you simplify that, you're going to end up with negative 2x Add the exponents, you get negative 2x to the 7th. So to find the end behavior, the fact that it's a negative leading term means the right side is going to go down. The fact that it's an odd exponent means that it's going to go in the opposite direction on the left. So let's put this all together. So we would have an x-intercept at negative 3. We'd have an x-intercept at 1. We'd have a y-intercept at negative 54. We know the end behavior, the left side is going to go up and to the left. The right side is going to go down and to the right. So I forgot my y-intercept there. Um, and so now we're going to connect the points. So what's going to happen is it's going to pass through negative 3. And it's going to come up, and then it's going to bounce off there. So that would be our graph in general. All right, so hopefully you did a well, good job with that. And good luck now as you work on the rest of your assignment.